Welcome to another episode of I Know Jacks, the show where we focus on fun, and this time we have a lot of fun lined up for you. This month we are officially celebrating the fact that I Know Jacks is one year old. Now honestly, it doesn't feel like that long to me, but when I look back at what we have accomplished and the amazing experiences that I've had during the year, I'm just amazed. In the beginning, we were just new kids on the block. Now, we're seasoned veterans. It's kind of cool though. Working with I Know Jax is one of the best jobs I've ever had. It's a lot of fun and I get to experience so much. But enough about me and on with the show. Our next story is big, really big, and you history buffs will love it. The Flying Fortress, the B-17, has become an icon of American power. The crew members who flew the bombers during World War II were real heroes. They were flying these airplanes over enemy territory for you know, eight, ten hour missions in uh, very hazardous conditions, everything from the freezing weather to the flak and, and fighters. And uh, I mean, they were just brave guys. And then this Memphis Bell airplane kind of highlights the fact that uh, not many people ever made it 25 missions. And uh, this was one of the first airplanes, or this uh, is a replica of the Memphis Bell that was one of the first to make 25 missions. The way they planned the mission was they would decide how far they needed to go to what city they had they were going to they'd figure out how much fuel they had to carry for that and then they would figure how many bombs they could carry and still have enough fuel to get back and forth then they would figure out how many airplanes they needed to, to take out there to deliver the amount of tonnage of bombs they wanted to drop there's not much space inside the flying fortress for the crew which usually consisted of 10 to 13 people the nose of the airplane is what housed the norden bomb site and actually just very few airplanes would contain that Norton bomb site. Just the lead airplanes on a bombing run would have that, and, and the other airplanes would drop their bombs, they call them toggleers, on the lead airplanes uh, dropping of their bombs. And then just aft of him, uh, you'll notice on some airplanes they have the Astrodome there, but that was where the navigator would sit, and it was his job to plot their course and get them very close to where they needed to be. Then the bombardier would take over and, and do the bombing run over where they were trying to, to hit. Uh, and then now you go upstairs into the cockpit and that's where the pilot, co-pilot, and they had a top turret operator. He was also called the engineer. So you had two guys in the nose and three guys in the cockpit area. So the engineer was a kind of a mechanic, knew the airplane very well, but he would operate the top guns. And then as you go back, you had, went through the bomb bay. Then the radio room was just after that. The one radio operator sat there. And then farther back, you had the two waste gunners, the ball turret guy. The, well, that was the one place I don't think anybody wanted to be, but it turned out after the war, they tallied it up, and that was really the safest place people were because you were in a small, confined area, and you had a lot of bulletproof uh, armor around you. So as, as uh, unpopular as it was to be picked as a ball turret guy, it turned out to be the safest. And, uh, and then we said the waist gunners, and then in the very back you had the tail gunner. And that position was determined to be the most dangerous. Once you lost your tail gunner, you were probably going down. You can almost imagine what it must have been like. The smell of the fuel, the noise of the gunfire, not really knowing what's going on around you. Uh, one of the pilot sayings are there's so many hours of boredom and then uh, moments of stark terror and uh, I'm sure that's a lot of what these veterans were up against there is that uh, you know there was long flights to get where you were and all of a sudden it'd be just terribly exciting of, uh, and scared of what they were running into. One guy was telling us how he was one of the first crew members to get an electric suit because they were so cold up there they were they were having to be able to go higher and higher and they needed these electric suits. He was in the ball turret and he's all you know squashed in there it's a very tight area he's in the ball turret he gets so cold he turns on his suit and it shorts out and starts electrocuting him so he pulls up his shirt and he's got this huge scar on the side of him where he uh, got fried with the, the electric suit but after he got patched up and got back and was flying again he said he was just always real reluctant to turn that suit on but it, it always got cold enough he wanted to turn it back on uh, the Liberty Foundation was founded by Don Brooks 
Uh, his father was a tail gunner on the original Liberty Bell B-17. And uh, Don's father passed away many years ago, but Don had always wanted to restore another B-17 and put it in the colors of the Liberty Bell, just like his dad flew, because he knew what it meant to his dad and all those veterans and all. And so uh, he's gone on some very interesting missions over the years to recover B-17s and restore them. And we're in the process of restoring the Liberty Bell airplane now. But right now, to help us do that, we're touring the Memphis Bell airplane. We're able to give rides in it. Flights for the public will be available tomorrow, November 4th. Anyone seeking information can call 918-340-0243 or visit libertyfoundation.org. For a wannabe pilot like myself, this month has been great. First I flew in formation with the Geico Skytypers and now the Memphis Bell. Too cool. I told you we were going big in this episode. I'll be back with more right after this. I Know Jax is supported by these great businesses. CamdenHappenings.com for all things Camden County. Make sure to join the CamdenHappenings.com newsletter to get the latest Lovetown USA updates along with local event info. Checkers Barbecue is all about great food and having fun with friends and family. Visit Chef Art Jeanette and check out his great new Sunday lunch buffet. Come get your hot shrimp, baby! CoastalCompanion.com is your guide to fun things to do on the coasts of South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Sign up for the Coastal VIP newsletter for info on festivals and events and ideas for weekend getaways. You looking to get into shape? Train one-on-one -on -one with Jacksonville Sharks number 66 Isaac Morales at Snap Fitness on Southside Boulevard across from Tinseltown. Affordable prices and personalized workouts mean maximum fitness. Train like a shark. Your wedding is one of the most important days of your life. Make it magical with a cinematic wedding film from Bennett Video Productions. Call 904-451-9448. Latitude 30 is the official away game headquarters of the Jaguars. Catch all the football action in our HD Sports Theater for every away game. 365-5555. Latitude-30.com. Hi, my name is A.E. Diva. I'm an A.E.D. What's an A.E.D.? Well, not to brag, but I'm a lifesaver. If someone goes into cardiac arrest, I shock them back to life. What's cardiac arrest? It's when your heart stops beating. Yeah, I know, serious. But never fear if A.E. Diva is here. I hope I see you at your school. Look for me. For more information about AEDs in schools and how to help stop the number one killer in schools, go to shocktolife.com. Around the country, food trucks have become a common sight in the city landscape. These mobile restaurants serve great food where people hang out. Food trucks have become a staple in big cities like New York, LA, and Chicago. Here in Jacksonville, the trend is finally beginning to catch on. Today I'm with Mike and Karen of the Jack's Truckies. Tell me a little bit about this food truck movement. You know, we thought uh, food trucks work great everywhere else, and, and why not Jacksonville? So uh, in March, we started the uh, Jack's Food Truck Championships. And we started Jack's Chuckies ever since, and it's really grown. From that was this... a huge deal too. Oh, absolutely! I mean, it went from literally four trucks to like over two dozen now, and uh, it's great to see the growth and entrepreneurial spirit, and uh, just the, you know, great new food we have out now in Jacksonville. So, Karen, tell me some details about what we can find here in Jacksonville. Sure. So, in Jacksonville, you'll find everything from handcrafted tacos to barbecue that's been smoked over hardwood for 16 hours, turkey pesto panini. Um, a pork belly BLT, pretty much everything as far as food goes. And it's all quality food at drive through prices. Right. Um, you can find us and follow us every single day on social media. So we're on Facebook and we're on Twitter and we post our locations of all the trucks that are out that day. Cool. Um, so Facebook.com, Jack's Truckies or at Jack's Truckies on Twitter. Cool. Well, that's a pretty neat service. Every single day? Every day that they're out. I'm with Andrew Ferens with On you? The Fly. Now, food trucks are a big trend right now, and I hear that you're one of the most popular. Tell me about your little awards. 
Well, we uh, we got Jack's Truckies did a championship uh, a while back, and uh, we took the overall champion, and we also took the People's Choice Award, uh, which we're super proud of, and uh, you know, super proud of our food that we do. So it was uh, it was a good thing. And then we also got voted best food truck um, with Jack's Folio magazine, um, and that was a big accomplishment too. Uh, we do uh, you know upscale. We do marinated uh, chicken soft tacos, a popular item. Uh, we also do sesame seared uh, ahi tuna over a. Uh, Wasabi uh, Napa cabbage slaw with fresh uh, ginger on top, okay. um, and that's finished with the sweet chili soy. Um, we do a bunch of different kind of gourmet grilled cheese sandwiches. Um, we do a braised pulled pork taco as well. We do an El Diablo sandwich, which is um, really good as well. It's got crushed up Doritos on top. And then you can check us out Monday through Friday downtown um, on the corner of Adams and Jefferson, right next to the new courthouse. I really enjoyed my gourmet lunch. It was amazing, and for those of you who wonder, I didn't eat all that food myself. I shared it with my trusty camera woman. Now let's take a look at what's happening on the coast. You know I love planes and flying and good food, but did you know that I also love dance? Didn't think so. I enjoy shows like So You Think You Can Dance, and I personally think that I would be awesome in the next breaking movie. But until that happens, <laughs> the show Tap Dogs looks like something right up my alley. I mean, who doesn't like tap? Tap Dogs is taking the world by storm, having performed in 330 cities worldwide with 12 million seats sold. Tap Dogs is part theater, part dance, part rock concert, and the performance is in Jacksonville for one day only, November 10th at the Times Union Center. For more details, go to iknowjax.com. December 21st, 2012 marks the end of the Mayan calendar, the day that some people say will be the end of the world. So join us for our Party Like It's the End of the World Jacksonville Brewery and Pub Crawl and stare the apocalypse in the face. We'll visit several of Jacksonville's craft beer hotspots, and everyone gets a free Party Like It's the End of the World t-shirt, too. So book your spot now. Contact Bill at PlayHarderTours.com or call 904-910-7009. I Know Jax is supported by these great businesses. CamdenHappenings.com for all things Camden County. Make sure to join the CamdenHappenings.com newsletter to get the latest Lovetown USA updates along with local event info. Checkers Barbecue is all about great food and having fun with friends and family. Visit Chef Art Jeanette and check out his great new Sunday lunch buffet. Come get your hot shrimp, baby! CoastalCompanion.com is your guide to fun things to do on the coasts of South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Sign up for the Coastal VIP newsletter for info on festivals and events and ideas for weekend getaways. You looking to get into shape? Train one-on-one -on -one with Jacksonville Sharks number 66, Isaac Morales at Snap Fitness on Southside Boulevard across from Tinseltown. Affordable prices and personalized workouts mean maximum fitness. Train like a shark. Your wedding is one of the most important days of your life. Make it magical with a cinematic wedding film from Bennett Video Productions. Call 904-451-9448. Latitude 30 is the official away game headquarters of the Jaguars. Catch all the football action in our HD Sports Theater for every away game. 365-5555, latitude-30.com. I'm hanging out with my buddy Chris Chislett, the wine guy at Green Man Gourmet, and today he's going to educate me about something really cool. What is it? It's sulfites. Not cool. No, not cool. Not, not really cool. boring, right? Really boring uh, word. Don't turn uh, the channel yet. Yeah, Hang no, on. seriously, this is going to get really All interesting. Right. <laughs> um, 
I promise. Contain sulfites. Contain sulfites. Uh, I'm sure you've Two seen words. that on the yes, yeah. Contain it. sulfites on the back of a bottle of wine. Uh, a lot of people have this idea that sulfites are the cause of their headache. You know, I had three bottles it's of wine not. last night and woke no. up this morning and Just had this bottles? huge headache. I don't understand you know, that. Like they're blaming the sulfites on the, uh, <laughs> on the actual wine itself. So. This, this sulfite headache, you know, on, on the back of a label it says contains sulfites, but it doesn't give any kind of description as to what sulfites are or, or any of this They're thing. They're bad, I hear. Yeah, pretty bad. Um, they're actually, they don't cause headaches, they actually kill people, is what, having a sulfite allergy is almost, uh, a almost triggers like a, uh, an asthmatic reaction. So, but to be truthful, um, like two ounces of, uh, of like trail mix or dried apricots has about ten times the amount of sulfites than wine. So people freak out about contained sulfites on you know, wow. a wine bottle, but they're cool with you know, apricots and, and trail mix and, and, and these different kinds of things. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of, a lot of a lot, this, you know, a little bit of information, you know, people kind of freak out about that stuff. Uh, I freak out well, about so. a little bit of information. Yeah, You've you know, been with me on how many shows I know, now. Sorry, yeah, I know, you're already, he's already freaking out. Um, so yeah, this contains sulfites, just trying to do away with the myth that sulfites actually cause, um, you know, headaches. That's really what not what it is. What does cause the headache? Well, there's a few different theories. A um, lot of, um, and there's more very, I yeah, know, more theories, <laughs> and there's, there's very little research into it. Mm -hmm. um, scientists have shown that um, potentially it could be the tannins um, actually in wine. Um, some scientists have shown that it could be um, a chemical, uh, actually alcohol in cheaper wines or dark, al uh, dark alcohol, co actually right. called cogenas. Um, that actually could be the reason. That's a big uh, word. Cogenas, yeah, how's about that? Uh, and, the, and my personal theory is it's the Beach way that you're drinking. I have a theory, <laughs> I'm my own little wine scientist. I, uh, I still think it's the way that people drink wine. Like they say that, you know, for a start in Europe, you don't actually have to label contain sulfites. So people who go on vacation said, I had a wine without sulfites. Yeah. That's not how it goes, they just don't label it. Right. But also, you gotta consider the way, like, you know, the when you're on vacation, yeah. and yeah, you know, when you go on vacation, you're, you've got bread and water on the table and multiple food courses, whereas here, you just get home from work, <laughs> pop the cock, slam what a bottle, you, you know, and know what that's, you're yeah, about. I know, right, you're the perfect example yeah, of know, right? what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of my, my theory, it's like the way that you're drinking it, but also some, in some of the cheaper wines, that's right. why they potentially cause more headaches, but absolutely not the sulfites. Now you were saying, though, that Red wine is not more causing headaches more than white wine. It's actually the other way around. Well, it's or really not. Um, in the sulfites in actually in white wine, there's more sulfites actually in white wine okay, gotcha. um, than there are in red wine. So because that kills that all. Yeah, sulfite is almost like a preservative, right. um, and white wines need more uh, preservatives just right. because to protect the color. Uh, and they're more delicate than red wines. So color, in case you were wondering. Color, um, color. Um, it has a U in it when we spell it in, uh, I know. in England, but uh, yeah, so uh, never get it right. <laughs> I, I never will. I never will. I'm sorry. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the main differences. So hopefully, all you guys learn something about sulfites and wine, and we'll learn more on the next wine goth segment. This Wednesday, November 7th, is the first Wednesday Art Walk, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., rain or shine. Art Walk spans a 15-block radius within the downtown core, with 30-plus galleries, museums, restaurants, bars, and businesses participating, and dozens of artists in the open-air Hemming Plaza. Art Walk is a great opportunity to support Jacksonville's local creative talent. For more information, visit iknowjax.com. After visiting Memphis Belle, it makes me very aware of the sacrifices made by the veterans of World War II and all those that have served to protect our freedoms. Monday, November 12th, the city of Jacksonville will honor the true American heroes, our veterans and active duty military. This patriotic parade features more than 4,000 participants, including grand marshals, senior military officials, active duty and retired military units, veterans groups, local high school marching bands, military organizations, decorative floats, JROTC units, and more. For more info, go to iknowjax.com. Here at I Know Jax, we're already making plans for the holiday season and for the new year. I've learned from experience many years of experience, I might add, that as soon as you get those darn pumpkins out, 
Before long, it's time for Christmas trees and Santas. I've always loved fall, but Christmas, not so much. I guess my mom dragged me around to the mall too much when I was a kid or something, so this year, I'm going to make myself a challenge. I'm going to come up with ways to make Christmas season fun for all of us. Keep watching the show and you'll find out exactly what I mean. That concludes this week's episode of I Know Jax. I'll be back again next week with a new show. And until then, I'll see you on the internet. I Know Jax is supported by these great businesses. CamdenHappenings.com for all things Camden County. Make sure to join the CamdenHappenings.com newsletter to get the latest Love Town USA updates along with local event info. Checkers Barbecue is all about great food and having fun with friends and family. Visit Chef Art Jeanette and check out his great new Sunday lunch buffet. Come get your hot shrimp, baby! CoastalCompanion.com is your guide to fun things to do on the coasts of South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Sign up for the Coastal VIP newsletter for info on festivals and events and ideas for weekend getaways. You looking to get into shape? Train one-on-one -on -one with Jacksonville Sharks number 66, Isaac Morales at Snap Fitness on Southside Boulevard across from Tinseltown. Affordable prices and personalized workouts mean maximum fitness. Train like a shark. Latitude 30 is the official away game headquarters of the Jaguars. Catch all the football action in our HD Sports Theater for every away game. 365-5555. Latitude-30.com.